Continuing on with our adventure of enthalpy, we get to section 6 now, which is finding enthalpy using standard heats of formation. So to remind us kind of where we've been, we first looked at how to determine enthalpy using an experimental approach, and that was through calorimetry. And in the last section, we looked at how to do it using Hess's law. So now we're going to look at how do you use, how do you find enthalpy using standard heats of formation. My goal is to have section six into two videos. The first video, I'm going to attempt to define what a heat of formation is, and then how do you use it to calculate enthalpy. Okay, so uh, standard heat or enthalpy of formation. First of all, let's take a look at the symbology. So hopefully you're used to the delta H. That's just what's the change in heat content. You know, is it losing energy? Is it gaining energy? But then it's got these other symbols. Okay, you got this little degree symbol, and then you got a little sub F. The degree symbol stands for standard conditions, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Okay, standard conditions. And then the little sub F stands for formation. In other words, you are forming something. You are creating something. So now that we know that, Let's read the definition for standard enthalpy or heat of formation. So standard enthalpy of formation is defined as the heat change, which is your delta H, involved when one mole of a compound is formed, so that's the sub F, from its elements in their natural form at standard conditions. And standard conditions is one atmosphere of pressure and 25 degrees Celsius, which is roughly what the conditions would be in a normal room. So basically, there, this is like, science, the reason why the definition has to be so specific is because, you know, heat change can vary depending on, okay, is the room really cold? Is the room really hot? Is the pressure high? Is it low? So scientists have to say, okay, we need some sort of baseline. We need some sort of starting point where we all can talk. So we're gonna say, all right, when the room is, con is standard conditions and when you're forming a compound, one mole of it, from its elements, that the, the heat that's involved with that, the heat change that's involved with that, that's known as standard heat of formation. Okay, so you probably are like, wait, what? Let's start looking at some examples. So if you were to look at the back of a textbook or if you were to look online, Look for a table of heats of formation. There'd be a whole bunch of uh, data points. And so here's an example. Here's just a really short table. Notice it lists the substance, uh, the name and, and the formula, and then it has listed the heat of formation, okay? This is the energy change. This is the heat change. If you were to form one mole of any of these substances, from their elements in their standard form, okay? So for example, if we were to look at the heat change for water, so H2O liquid, because notice it is different than gas, so let's look at H2O liquid. H2O liquid has a heat of formation of negative 285.8. What the heck does that mean? What that means is if you form one mole of water, from its elements, hydrogen and oxygen, what's the, ch how much energy does it take to do that? Like what's the, the change in energy to make that one mole of water from its elements, hydrogen and oxygen? And the answer is, it's gonna be an exothermic reaction. It's gonna give off 285.8 kilojoules of energy, right? So forming one mole of water gives off 285.8 kilojoules of energy. Now we can actually write this out as a chemical equation. So if I were to ask you write out the chemical, the thermochemical equation for the heat of formation of water, you could do that. You would say, okay, um, here, here's actually what I tell students to do. I say, okay, what, what do you wanna form? You wanna form water, right? Okay, so H2O is what we're trying to form. Okay, what elements make up water? This is not a trick question. All right, well, you got to react some hydrogen with some oxygen, right? Okay, but how do you write hydrogen and oxygen as elements? Can they just be written as H and O? No, we know they have to be written diatomically, right? That's their standard form, okay? So I'd have to write a two there and a two there, okay? Now, what is the natural form of hydrogen and oxygen? I mean, we have the H2 and the O2, that's good. 
But what state of matter does hydrogen and oxygen come in? What's their normal state of matter under standard conditions of one atmosphere and 25 Celsius? Well, hydrogen is going to be a gas, and so is oxygen. Okay, so we're, we're getting closer, right? So we have water is being formed from its elements in their natural form at standard conditions. Okay, we're getting closer. Now we have to make sure it's balanced, right? So, okay, we need, let's see, we got two there and we need a two here. Okay, so this represents water being formed from its elements in their standard states. Excellent, but this doesn't represent a heat of formation reaction yet. We're super close. The only thing that's missing or the only thing that's um, needing to be changed is the definition is when one mole of a compound is formed. According to our balanced equation, this is where two moles. So how do we fix that? How do we use a property of enthalpy to have this written so that we're only creating one mole of water? Well, divide all your coefficients by two. And so that would end up being two divided by two is gonna be one, two divided by two here is gonna be one, and then one divided by two is gonna be one half. So what we just did is we wrote a chemical equation where we are creating one mole of a substance from its elements in their natural form at standard conditions. So does this represent a heat of formation? You bet it does. And so what would be the delta H written at the end of this equation? It's this heat of formation, negative 285.8 kilojoules. And that's actually what's written right here. Okay, it's written down here. I just wanted to show you how we get that. All right, I wanted to show you where that came from. So let's do some, let's do some other examples, right? That might, you may have been like, okay, I kind of get what you're saying, but let's look at some other examples. Example 18, write the chemical equations that would represent standard heats of formation reactions for the following compounds. So NaCl, okay? You want to create NaCl. All right, so NaCl, I want to be my product. And by the way, what would be the state of matter for NaCl uh, as standard conditions? Well, it's an ionic compound. And so ionic compounds are solid unless it dissolves in water, which that's not the natural form of sodium chloride at room conditions, right? It, you wouldn't find sodium chloride naturally dissolved in water. So it, it's good. all ionic compounds will be solid. Okay, well, let me ask you this. What elements form sodium chloride? Well, you have to react some Na with some Cl, right? So first thing is, are those written correctly? Well, sodium is written correctly because it's not diatomic, but chlorine is not. It needs to be Cl2. Next, what would be the natural form of sodium and chlorine at standard conditions? Sodium is a metal, so it should be solid. Chlorine should be a gas. And I, I did not give myself enough space here. I'm sorry. sorry about that. All right, so now we have to balance. Okay, so we have a two here and a two here. So this represents a balanced chemical equation where we are creating sodium chloride from its elements in their natural uh, natural forms at standard conditions. Only thing is, this does not represent a heat of formation because we're making two moles of sodium chloride and we should only be making one mole. So what do I do? I'm gonna divide every coefficient by two. And so two divided by two is one, two divided by two is one there, and then this one divided by two is gonna end up giving me a half. All right, so does this represent a heat of formation? Yes, it does, because I'm creating one mole of a substance from its elements in their natural form at standard conditions. Let's do one more. I wanna create Al2O3. So Al2O3 is the product. It's an ionic compound, so it should be solid. What elements make Al2O3? Aluminum plus oxygen. Aluminum can be written by itself, Oxygen cannot, it should be O2. What's the natural form of aluminum? Solid. What's the natural form of oxygen? Gas. So we have, we're creating aluminum oxide from the elements in their natural form and standard conditions. Now we just have to balance. All right, let's see, we need to put a three here, a two there, and then a four here. So that balances the equation, but as a result of balancing the equation, look, we're creating two moles. We don't want that, we wanna create one mole. So I need, I need to divide everything by two. So four divided by two, oh gosh, I'm erasing too many things. Four divided by two, let me put that A back, uh, should be two. 
3 divided by 2, there we go, is going to give us 3 halves. And then 2 divided by 2 is going to give us the 1. And so now, this represents a chemical equation for a standard heat of formation. We're creating one mole of aluminum oxide from its elements in their natural form at standard conditions. All right. So let's look at example 19. Write the thermochemical equation that would represent the heat of formation for nitric oxide. This is almost like what we were just doing, but we're making it thermochemical now. So I'm going to make this one go a little faster. Uh, I need to write the chemical equation that would represent a heat of formation. So NO is what I'm trying to create. Notice that it's gas because it tells me it's gas right there. All right, what elements make up NO? Well, nitrogen and oxygen. Both of them are diatomic, so they should be N2. And N2 is gas, and so is O2 at standard conditions. So we've got everything written correctly. We've got the standard forms or phases of matter. I just need to make sure everything's balanced. Okay, so that balances it, but as you can see, this does not create one mole, it creates two. So I gotta divide everything by two. So this is gonna make it one half there. It's gonna make it one half there. And then two divided by two will give us our one. So this represents the chemical equation that would be the heat of formation. But it wants to make it thermochemical. How do you make it thermochemical? Well, we need to include a delta H on the end. What value goes here? Well, since this is a chemical equation that represents the heat of formation for NO, what is the heat of formation for NO? Let's look here. Do, 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 do. Oh, there it is, NO, positive 90.2. That is the delta H that goes at the end. So this whole thing would be my answer. That's the thermochemical equation that would represent the heat of formation for nitric oxide. All right, uh, question down here. Do the following equations represent standard enthalpies of formation? Why or why not? Let's look at this first one. Does this represent a heat of formation? The answer is no, it does not. And for two reasons. Number one, you can see that, are we creating one mole? No, we're creating two. So that right there does not represent a heat of formation. Also, silver, silver should, is not liquid at standard conditions. Silver is solid at standard conditions. So for those two reasons, it's definitely not rep, this is definitely not representing a heat of formation. What about the second reaction? Is this representing a heat of formation? Well, I'm creating one mole of a substance from calcium and fluorine. Looks like they're written correctly. Calcium is a solid at room conditions and fluorine is a gas at room conditions, so yes. This one does represent a heat of formation. All right, so this last slide is what we're gonna finish in this uh, video. So now that we understand what a heat of, actually, I might do this on the next video because I don't wanna uh, go too fast. So we're gonna stop here. I, got too, I just got too excited. We're gonna stop here and we'll resume in the next video.